After 25 years, we are now within days of Blue Origin making their first orbital rocket launch attempt with a new Glenn rocket, which is finally on the pad ready to go in Florida. In fact, it looks like an incredibly exciting day for fans of experimental rocket launches because SpaceX is also planning to fly Starship Super Heavy Flight Number 7 on the same day. I understand many of you are more interested in what SpaceX is doing with Starship and Super Heavy. It is indeed the much bigger rocket. However, back in 2016, when Blue Origin announced New Glenn, rocket watchers were taken aback by just how big this first orbital rocket was going to be. While Rocket Lab, Astra, and other new space companies were designing small orbital vehicles, Blue Origin came on and said, Hi, we're going to build the biggest orbital rocket. New Glenn dwarfs Falcon 9, Atlas V, and Delta IV in terms of payload capability. It's close to Falcon Heavy, but arguably more modern with higher efficiency engines and more reusability. The only reason we aren't talking about how remarkably large this rocket is is that Starship and Super Heavy exist, which dwarf everything else out there. New Glenn currently stands 98 meters tall, and the core is 7 meters wide. This measurement is just the tank. There are actually sections that are even wider, approaching the 9-meter diameter of Starship. New Glenn is a two-stage rocket with the first stage burning methane and liquid oxygen and the second stage burning hydrogen, which makes it far more performant in orbit. The methane-burning first stage is about 58 meters tall and is designed to be 100% reusable from day one. It has three different sections— an aft section with the engines and propulsion, a main tank section containing methane and liquid oxygen, and a forward section with thrusters for attitude control and fins for guiding it when descending to the landing area. Unlike SpaceX, Blue Origin has elected to use more traditional fin designs with diamond wings that rotate around the middle. It also features a set of strakes that provide significant lift and better cross-range capability during descent. During ascent, this rocket is propelled by 7B for engines, which is obviously blue engine number 4. This is an oxygen-rich staged combustion cycle that uses methane and liquid oxygen. Each of these engines can produce about 250 tons of thrust. The oxidizer-rich staged combustion cycle was developed by the Soviet Union using kerosene and was brought to the U.S. for use on the Atlas and RD-180 engines. The real comparison everyone wants to hear is against SpaceX's Raptor. These engines produce a similar amount of thrust, but they are larger and operate at much lower chamber pressures. Blue Origin intentionally made this decision to operate the cycle at lower chamber pressures to be kinder to the engine, thereby extending its life and making it reusable. In contrast, SpaceX has pushed those chamber pressures up to maximize performance from a smaller package. While this will be the first flight of the new Glenn rocket, it's worth noting that this is not the first flight of these engines. They propel ULA's Vulcan rocket, which has already launched successfully twice. Of the seven engines, four of them do not gimbal. Only three in a single line have gimbal capability to provide control during ascent and landing. Packed into the aft section are six landing legs used for recovery, and the forward section includes cold gas thrusters for attitude adjustments in flight. The second stage is also 7 meters wide and propelled by a pair of B-3U engines, which are vacuum versions of the engines used on New Shepard. These engines are supposed to use an expander cycle, unlike New Shepard's tap-off cycle. The turbopumps in the new Shepard version utilize hot gas from the combustion chamber to run turbines, while the upper stage versions vaporize hydrogen over a heat exchanger, creating pressurized propellant to drive the pumps. This is the same mechanism used by the efficient RL-10 engines on the Centaur. The difference is that the Centaur is fully closed cycle, so output from the turbines goes into the combustion chamber for more performance. However, the B-3U engines on New Glenn allow for excess hydrogen to be dumped overboard, yielding a slight drop in efficiency in exchange for more thrust. The primary distinction between B-3 on New Shepard and New Glenn is the massive nozzle extensions, which allow exhaust gases to expand to larger volumes, capturing more thrust. Despite not being quite as good as the Centaur V used on Falcon, 
the upper stage design is still much more efficient than the one used on Falcon 9 or Starship. It can potentially deliver about 45 tons to low Earth orbit and about 13 tons to geostationary transfer orbit. Adding to this, New Glenn features the largest fairings in the launch business. The fairings on New Glenn are 7 meters wide and about 17 meters tall, which intrigues customers looking to place large payloads. While Falcon Heavy can theoretically launch more mass into low Earth orbit than New Glenn, its fairing size remains similar to that of Falcon 9, similar to the Genie and Aladdin. Phenomenal cosmic power with an itty-bitty payload space. New Glenn provides ample space for payloads, illustrated by its first payload, Blue Ring, a small test payload that will serve as a satellite bus with its own propulsion and power capabilities. For a while, there was hope that New Glenn's debut launch would carry two escapade spacecraft on a mission to Mars, but unfortunately, that was delayed, causing it to miss its Mars window. Returning to the first stage, New Glenn was designed to be reusable from the start, with the first stage firing for about 3 minutes and 10 seconds before a staging operation. Afterward, it will continue in a ballistic arc before relighting the engines for a 28-second atmospheric entry burn to minimize impact on the booster. This entry burn is not necessarily a permanent feature. They have ample mass margins and are exploring performance, aiming to enhance efficiency. As it descends through the atmosphere at high Mach speeds, it will encounter significant atmospheric heating. This is where its custom-designed heat shield material, known as Comet, comes into play. Initially, in many rocket renders, Blue Origins rockets were shown in white, but recently, they've appeared in their natural golden color, resembling that iconic dress that sparked debate over its colors. With appropriate thermal protection and wings, the booster should glide and control itself better than Falcon 9, aiming for a precise landing on the barge named Jacqueline, situated in the Atlantic. Like Falcon 9, it will relight its engines to descend gently onto the ship. While many may claim that Blue Origin is imitating SpaceX, it's crucial to acknowledge that Blue Origin has long discussed reusing their rockets. They developed multiple vertical takeoff and landing test vehicles before SpaceX launched Falcon 1, and they successfully landed and reused their new Shepard booster ahead of SpaceX reusing Falcon 9. An interesting feature New Glenn boasts that Falcon 9 doesn't is the ability to throttle down enough to hover, allowing for significantly more precise landings. The exact throttle range of the B for isn't well documented yet and I'm eager to see how their first landing attempt will turn out. Achieving a successful landing and recovery on their inaugural flight would indeed mark a notable achievement. The landing barge Jacqueline is positioned in the Atlantic Ocean, named after Jeff Bezos's mother. Initially, there were plans to convert old cargo ferries into landing barges, but that concept was abandoned, leading to a design more consistent with SpaceX's models. Drones will assist in servicing the booster immediately after landing, connecting to the umbilical for safe defueling and de-energizing of systems. The landing legs will deploy seamlessly from the aft section of the rocket. According to CEO David Limp, each leg can handle 150 tons of impact force. This leads to the question of New Glenn's mass at launch. Blue Origin hasn't disclosed specifics, but based on the thrust of the first stage engines, it probably doesn't exceed 1,500 tons. With the size of the tanks on the first stage likely holding about 1,000 tons of propellant, plus additional mass for the second stage and fairing, estimates suggest around 1,200 to 1,300 tons at launch. According to the user's manual, New Glenn should deliver up to 45 tons to low Earth orbit and 13 tons to geostationary transfer orbit, which compares favorably with Falcon Heavy's core expansion. Yet I know what you're thinking. Starship launching hours after is capable of launching hundreds of tons into orbit, making New Glenn seem redundant before it even flies. However, Blue Origin and SpaceX have different development philosophies. SpaceX emphasizes iterative design, frequently launching hardware that might not be fully ready to facilitate testing, while Blue Origin has typically been more methodical in its approach. It's significant that NASA is prepared to let a mission to Mars fly on New Glenn's first rocket.
This indicates a level of confidence in its capability to perform complex missions effectively. Blue Origin expects New Glenn to succeed on its first flight due to its thorough preparation, while SpaceX often encounters challenges as they learn from each flight. Thus, while both rockets are products at different stages of development, hypothetically, New Glenn could function flawlessly on its maiden flight entering service. However, this is not a guarantee given Blue Origin's careful approach. New Glenn is designed for a distinct range of missions compared to Starship, with a hydrogen upper stage capable of launching payloads to geostationary orbit, the Moon, or even Mars. In contrast, Starship requires extensive refueling, and using it as an upper stage for small payloads seems impractical. It makes more sense for Starship to transport a kick stage in its cargo bay for missions, yet such development is still in progress. Currently, they plan to launch several test satellites from a deployed platform with a narrow opening that won't accommodate most payloads. Though Starship possesses a larger cargo capacity, it faces constraints due to its design. New Glenn's fairing size means it could theoretically accommodate more extensive payloads. Given that Blue Origin has been testing the recovery of its fairings, it is possible they could announce plans for that soon. Since the fairings sit atop the rocket, should there be a need for even larger fairings, Blue Origin would likely find it easier to adjust the design than SpaceX can alter Starship's dimensions. This would interfere with its reusability. It's also notable that the initial new Glenn announcement considered a three-stage variant, which could benefit from a high-performance third stage. Merging it with Centaur V could facilitate deeper space missions. While the media often highlights SpaceX's colossal Starship and Super Heavy, the real advantage of the latter lies in its complete reusability. The future of New Glenn remains bright, as it has several interested customers. Blue Origin has its lunar ambitions looking to build lunar landers and send missions via New Glenn. Moreover, Jeff Bezos' involvement with Amazon aligns with plans for a Starlink equivalent named Kuiper, aiming to launch numerous satellites with Blue Origin, alongside contracts with OneWeb, ULA, and NASA. Ultimately, the success of payloads will significantly depend on the performance of this first launch. I truly hope they've ensured all systems are ready for a safe flight.